A little bit of fun, uh, fun insight that I'd like to share with you in just a bit. Let me see if it loads up very fast so that you just get to know about the ecosystem of our employment sector in our country. And uh, let, me, let me highlight it for you. It says the analysis on trends in Kenya's employment sector has been captured by official data on uh, former employment sectors between 2012 and 2021 that shows the overall jobs created in the construction sector that grew up to 95%. The jobs created by private players in the sector, they doubled up from 98,000, that is in 2012 compared to 2021. So it's like there's like an over 10 years margin in between. But here, they're giving you sectors that have employed people the most. And this includes an overall analysis that shows the dominant uh, sectors in the, in the employment sphere that offered up to 71% of all the formal jobs in the country, other than you know the education sector, the construction, uh, manufacturing, public administration, defense, agriculture, and many more. Together, all these six factors employed a total of two million Kenyans out of the total 2.9 Kenyans that were employed formally in 2021. And this again employed up to 336,800 people, that is by 2021, and that is in the manufacturing sector that grew up to 25% up to uh, a decade, that is employing up to 271 271,000, those are, those are really massive opportunities as well. And on that matter, we have live in studio a very powerful guest with us who's actually going to take us to the journey of how to professionally get a job. Are you a job seeker? Job hunting is another full-time job. I remember there was a time we had this conversation and we said, getting a job is a full-time job. Getting into that job is another job. Keeping that job professionally is another job. So before you get into employment, you already have a job already. So before you get there, it's a whole thing. And live with us in studio is MD Wambugu, who is from Skillfix to actually take us to the journey. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. Good morning and nice to meet you. Good morning. It's good to have you. Karibu sana. So uh, mm -hmm. we're going to start off by just a little background of how you got into Skillflix mm -hmm. and how you've done mentorship and you continue to train you know, people, not only just in the job sector, but mm -hmm. in many other facets as well. So just a little background of yourself. How did you get there? Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you so much once again. Uh, it's wonderful to be here and be able to interact on this uh, uh, quite pertinent uh, topic of right. uh, professional development. Mm -hmm. So my name is Wambugo. Um, I'm the CEO for uh, Skillfix International. Right. Um, I, I have quite a long history in the job market. Um, I've, I've, I've had an experience of around uh, 12 years in the job market. Right. And uh, it got to a point where I felt now it's time to run my show. And I felt there was quite a huge gap in the, in the job market. Right. And one of the gap was uh, matters to do with the leadership where I feel we have so many managers in many companies, but then very few of them are actually leaders. Right. Uh, probably that's a topic for another day. Leadership. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So right. one of the things we do in Skillfix right. is actually corporate training on matters leadership, transformational leadership. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we do in Skillfix is uh, uh, professional development, right. which now carries all these things that we are talking about today matters right. to do with the uh, interview coaching, CV writing, mm -hmm. uh, career development, uh, and how you as a professional, once you get the job, how do right. you grow from one level to, to the other? So it's probably, I would say, it's how to climb the, cari the career ladder. Right. So um, we also do soft skill training right. uh, because uh, most people who end up getting the jobs, you find to maintain that job or to retain that job, mm -hmm. you actually need uh, to have some skills, you know, yeah. things like uh, communication skills. If you're not good with communicating with other people in the, in the workplace, right. then chances are you may not retain that job for, 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 for a long time. Yeah. Right. So um, those are some of the things we do. Right. And um, so far we've actually seen quite an improvement in a number of people that we've actually uh, interacted with. And the feedback we get even on social media, yeah. you'd be able to see um, it's, it's quite a, a good thing that we are doing to help the youths out there to be able to grow in their career. Absolutely. Yeah. And what did you study? <laughs> For somebody who's watching, they'll be like, <laughs> who's this MD? First of all, you have titles in uh, there. You're the founder, you are the CEO, the CEO okay. you also do training. Like mm -hmm. you, you are a whole package in, mm -hmm. in, in that skill folks uh, forum. So did you like go to school? Do you have like a master's degree or mm -hmm. something? So um, initially I did uh, nursing. Yeah? Oh. 
I'm actually a trained nurse, nurse. and I actually yeah. even practiced for, for two years uh -huh. uh, in Nairobi Hospital. Right. But then from there, I had an interest with the, on, on, on what happens in the insurance industry because you realize the healthcare and insurance industry, they're actually symbiotic. One can't do without the other. The other. Uh -huh. So getting an experience of both areas uh, right. would now make me a competent person uh, right. working in either insurance or healthcare. Mm -hmm. And so um, after some time uh, working in Nairobi Hospital, I joined the insurance industry, that is Jubilee Insurance. Right. But then one of the challenges I got, and that's why I say the, these trainings, they actually really help, right. is uh, uh, you'd find when you go for meeting, because you see now Jubilee is a business, right. as, opposed to, uh, as opposed to Nairobi Hospital, which was a hospital. Mm -hmm. So this one, you're dealing more with the matters to do with business. Absolutely. And, and so we would go for meetings and they would say, you know, things like ROI, things like yeah. TAT, and I have no clue what those uh, abbreviations, abbreviations mean. Eh? Yeah. So that led me now to go back to school and do my degree in business management, uh -huh. specializing in entrepreneurship. Right. Uh, from there, I did my master's in business management, still mm -hmm. uh, specializing in uh, strategic management. Right. Um, and then... Uh, Soon I'm planning to enroll for my PhD. Okay. Yeah. And so all these courses, and especially to do with business management, right. they also play a very vital role when it comes to managing my skill fix business. Absolutely. Yeah. And did you see maybe like a gap in the market and niche? Since mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned you have over 10, 10 years experience mm -hmm. in the employment mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. you've worked with several companies mm -hmm. as well. Did you see the need to ensure that, you know, you train <laughs> uh, young upcoming professionals? Mm -hmm. Was there, did it come from a place of inspiration um, uh, as well? Like the other reason I've given you, was yeah. it niche or inspiration? Sure, sure. Because you see what, what happened, eh? for mm -hmm. example, for the various companies that I've worked in, Mm -hmm. uh, most of these companies have been involved in uh, interviewing. Right. And so I had an opportunity to have a look at a number of CVs as right. a short list to know who do we call for an interview, uh, mm -hmm. who do we leave out and all that. Mm -hmm. And so in that process of, of looking into these CVs, right. that's where you realize uh, guys really need a lot of training. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you look at a CV and you realize this CV probably must have been written when this person cleared high school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know those CVs that we do immediately after college and you're yeah. like, I uh, just need something to show what like I've done. Like a You know, to, just a sketch, know, yeah? Right. And so you find someone for so many years, they've right. been using the same CV. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not updated to really represent who you are currently as a professional. Mm -hmm. and and And... Uh, one of the things we do besides uh, just writing the CV is also taking you through on uh, how to present yourself as a professional on that document. Right. And uh, why I'm saying this is because remember the CV is the first document that gives an impression of right. who you are. So mm -hmm. as we talk about the, the job seeking journey, mm -hmm. we start with a CV. That's and so okay. this document, there's a lot of things that uh, people tend to overlook. Right. But in real sense, they are very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that gave me now an epiphany where I was like, mm -hmm. this is actually a gap which we can close. Right. And considering the unemployment uh, rate in Kenya. In the country. Mm -hmm. uh, th then we felt this is something that would really uh, help the young people out there. Right. Uh, and maybe just to, to add, you know, um, the job market is like a funnel. See, mm -hmm. there's a wider opening on the top and the the narrow one. Okay. So we have so many people who are looking for jobs. Right. But only a few of them Money will be able to, to succeed. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we sell that confidence whereby you're able to, uh, amongst the many who are there, at yeah. least you have higher chances of being, being selected, among those listed. who will be selected. Right. And, and when we talk about training, why, why the name Skill Fix? I think this I missed during introduction. Yeah. Uh, Almost sounds like Netflix. <laughs> skill flux. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we get all kind of names. There's those right. who can say skill flux. Uh, yeah. Uh, There's know, even one called Skillshare. Skillshare but, uh, for exactly. content creation. Yeah. So ours, uh, the, 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 the inspiration was from our goal is to fix the skills. Right. I mean, if you are invited for an interview, even without training, mm -hmm. there is already that which you, there's something that you, you already know about interview. Mm -hmm. So you already have the skill. Right. So we are here to help you fix that mm -hmm. skill just to make it a little bit better. 
Yeah. Yes, you so, have the training, you have the degree, yes. but you need you need to compose yourself professionally. Exactly. Packaging. So so we are, we are fixing your skills. So from All fixing right. skills, uh -huh. then we get the name skill fix. Skill fix. And then international uh -huh. is uh, probably speaking to our vision, because mm -hmm. uh, our vision is to be known worldwide. Right. Yeah. Wow, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at it from a point of, you know, uh, there's so many young people out here who mm -hmm. finish, actually annually, uh, mm -hmm. universities churn out over, over 5,000 mm -hmm. graduates every year. True. And all of them have a vision and mm -hmm. a dream of like getting into some sort of like company, mm -hmm. getting this job, but then they just don't know how to calibrate themselves to a mm -hmm. place they can position themselves professionally until they're liked by this company and selected. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I don't know if the HR is allowed to like someone's CV. <laughs> well, we liked it professionally, so that's why yeah. we selected you. I don't know. Uh, you, perhaps you well, can also uh, share on that. Can companies like a person's personality and then mm -hmm. they say, hey, mm -hmm. we saw some one, two, three things, we loved mm -hmm. it, and then that's why mm -hmm. you're here. Is it possible as well? Um, now, maybe let, let me say it's uh, nothing is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> nothing is impossible. Yeah. But uh, the bottom line yeah. is not, um, I, I would say the bottom line is uh, the content, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and there are two ways of uh, looking into a CV. These yeah. uh, companies that have the human resource looking into the CV. Yeah. And there are companies that use uh, systems or other bots that are called applicant tracking system. Mm -hmm. But this is basically for the huge corporations that they don't have time to go through all the CVs. Yeah. Uh, where you find like uh, one job has over a thousand applicants. Right. So the recruiter may not have time to sit down with all those CVs and look at them. Yeah. So you find they go through a system right. which tends now to sieve out who yeah. has the skills that you need. Right. And um, I'll be talking that probably in a few. Right. So for those who are looking at this document physically, like mm -hmm. a human resource officer uh, yeah. sitting down with a document, yeah. then what matters the most is... Uh, is basically the content of the CV. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, number one, um, the organization of the document. Right. So you find there are documents that uh, people have, mm -hmm. it's not organized. So you find yeah. uh, there's a job that comes after the other, yet they don't follow each other. Yeah. You know, the mix up of uh, where you worked and all that. Right. You find the skills don't match what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's why, um, writing a CV also requires that you optimize that document and the keywords. Right. So for example, oh, if so specific words that should yes, be in a, exactly. a resume. So for example, I'll, uh -huh. I'll give you an example. If you're applying for a management job in this case, okay. uh, you need to showcase that the skills you have mm -hmm. are skills to do with people management, skills right. with the, to do with the data analysis, mm -hmm. uh, you know, things that speak to uh, this person who is looking at your document to see that, yes, this is the person I am. Right. I am looking for. And that's why it is actually not advisable yeah. for you to use the same CV to apply for all the jobs that you, you come across. Yeah? Okay. And then you find uh, there's also the presentation of your, uh, your, your, your JD. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your roles in the company that you're working in? Your previous so you employers. Find, exactly. Yeah. So you find, uh, you know, people don't really bring it out uh, in a way that would make this other person understand what was your duty in the right. other places that you've worked in. Yeah. So if there's that ambiguity of uh, information in a CV, yeah. definitely me as an employer, I'll be like, yeah. uh, now this one, let me keep it aside because it's not giving me <laughs> what I need. Um, right. And then you find people tend to put uh, information that is not necessary in the CV. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, there's this first section where people put the biographical data. Yeah. We, which is not necessary. Why should they you call put it your ID data. number there? <laughs> you put your marital status, you've put yeah. your, 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 your ethnic, ethnic uh, or whatever. Religion. Religion. Yeah. Gender. Now, now, those are things <laughs> that would actually make you be disqualified. Be disqualified. They can. They can. I've seen, I've, but you I've, see, I've been somewhere at an audition and somebody had <laughs> so, so their name, their yeah. ID number, their father, like so many things exactly. happened to you. you know? So what happens? Eh? Right. What happens is... Uh, it is not right for someone to to have to, to be bigot, bigot, bigoted about uh, mm -hmm. you know such information. Mm -hmm. but, is it because it's too personal? Or am I just unnecessary? But, but human human are human. Uh -huh. For example, if you put for me your date of birth, 
right and i'm looking for someone who is uh, 20 24 years and below to employ mm. you see now that already doesn't give you an opportunity to come for the interview and present yourself i'll disqualify yeah. you before you even step in even step yeah in. and then uh -huh. we have people who are biased by nature uh, right. let's say you and you can't tell so this person will yeah. look at the cv and see oh this one comes from uh, this particular tribe uh right. we've had an experience with that tribe before mm. so let's just kick the cv out so we usually right. say put information because you see cv is a professional document Absolutely. put information that presents you as a professional right yeah so what are these information your contact mm -hmm. your email address right your your postal address your name mm -hmm. uh, th those are those are enough then is from there, there like now get into the professional summary uh -huh. present yourself as a professional and uh -huh. going downwards now professional stuff is there like a tagline maybe like that uh, there's there's a place where it's called like a profile like mm -hmm. um so and so and i'm seeking employment in blah 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 is it necessary to also have such a tagline on your cv mm. uh no, not really not uh -huh. really uh, basically what i say if i was to take you through the format of a cv right um at the top have a very nice name in bold and uh, you know a good font eh? Right. That shows this is my name, Daniel Wambugo. Mm -hmm. And then your personal details that is your mobile number, your email and postal address. Yeah. Once you do that, mm -hmm. then come to the professional background. Mm -hmm. So I, I usually see most CVs have a, I don't know, career objective. I mean objective yeah. that is yours. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to write it that. <laughs> <laughs> what I need to know is who are you as a professional? Yeah. So when when you get to the next section now the professional summary. Right. That's where now you 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 indicate um uh, who are you as a professional so i would say for example if it was me mm -hmm. i would say um I, I'm, I'm, a net, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a healthcare stroke insurance expert for the right. last 12 years i've worked in these companies mm -hmm. uh, i've gained these skills this is the difference i know i would bring to the industry you know that presents yeah. you as a professional absolutely then from professional summary you go to maybe skills mm -hmm. yeah uh skills now you speak of skills that actually communicate to the employer Mm. And now these ones, you look even to the, into the JD. Right. So what I do, for example, I would go into a JD, look at what uh, is the job description and what they are looking for. Yeah. And then I figure out which skills from that JD mm. do I have. Absolutely. And those are the skills that now you put into the CV. Into the CV. Right. Yeah? And then from there now you go to uh, working history starting mm. with the most recent going down ones to the yeah. oldest oh you start with the recent employer yes you start with the recent employer, employer and then and then going down now to the one that you started with yeah. and then you go to education and education mm. you actually don't even have to indicate uh, uh, your, your grades unless you're a graduate right but if you're <laughs> if you're so experienced in the industry yeah you like you I can only imagine your CV because exactly. you said you have you have masters. You've studied in several institutions. Yes. Now mm. you have to include. I got a credit degree. I got nah. a plus what? You know, I got you know, a B plus in high something. school. Then no. that's that's not necessary. You just uh -huh. indicate uh, the school that you went into, uh -huh. the certificate you got, and which year. Right. You know, because you see, right it's now it's a must to write the year. Yes, the year you graduated. It's good to mention so uh -huh. that at least we are able to see, um, you, you know, the flow of. Uh, uh, your education and uh, employment yeah. and all that. Eh? Yeah, that, yeah, the, that the chronology of like yes, uh, exactly. Because you can lie. You can mm. say in, in 2012 <laughs> I was <Exactly. laughs> in 2012 you mm. were in primary school. True, right. And then once you're done with the yeah. with the education, right, then you can go down to maybe other experiences. I mean, other other uh, technical trainings that you've had, the short courses. Mm -hmm. You can go to hobbies, although hobby is not really necessary. Uh, especially when you're experienced but yeah. when you're new in the job market then you can put the hobbies yeah and then referees uh, this is another tricky part mm. referees should uh, you can indicate available upon request it's not necessary for you to write referees yeah but when the advert specifically yeah. says yeah that you have to indicate referees indicate three <laughs> then with you have to indicate with their daytime exactly. number and uh, email yes uh -huh. so the reason why we say it's not necessary or mandatory for you to uh, really indicate the the referees mm -hmm. is because you also don't want to leak out the number of uh, yeah. the people that you you you've, you've your indicated bosses, as your referees because you, know, you can imagine yeah. if for example i wrote you as my referee mm -hmm. And every CV I send out there has your name, your number, your email, you know, all those yeah. things. Eh? 
and maybe I'm and then, famous out here. And you're a famous a person, for example, or you're mm. even a, a senior person in a company. Yeah. And this is, I'm talking of something I've actually experienced, someone writing me as a referee, mm -hmm. and then I start getting uh, people calling Close. me, yeah. adding me on WhatsApp groups, asking, soliciting for money. Right. And those, those are things you want to protect your referees from. From, right. So you apply for 20 jobs, mm -hmm. which you don't get uh, shortlisted. Yeah. And then that means those are 20 people or even more with your number. With your number. You see? And with the referees. <laughs> exactly. So that's why we yeah. say uh, you can actually indicate available upon request. Because what yeah. happens is uh, uh, after the interview, right. the employer will always reach out to you and tell you, please share with us your most recent Referee. referees. And why mm -hmm. they do that, I, I, I've also done that at some point, Okay. is because uh, most referees that people indicate on that document Mm. Uh, are people who they've not even interacted with for the last five years. <laughs> or they've never seen or met. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you yeah. find, uh, even if I call them without consulting you whether they are current, yeah. uh, some of them will be like, I, I don't remember this person. Mm. You know, I think uh, I met them close to 10 years ago, so I don't even have a clue. Maybe yeah. this person became a thief <laughs> and you right. don't know. Or they've never even worked. They're not even in this profession. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So it's uh, you can indicate available upon request, and then mm. once the employer reaches out to you, right. then they would be able to you, you would be able to provide the most current referees. Now those are people who you've interacted with recently, right. people you are working with in the in the in the, in the in maybe in the current employment that you're in, yeah. and all that. So basically, it, yeah, yeah j just to interrupt, is it is it also uh, mm -hmm. professional to alert them? There's a time I applied for something international and. Mm -hmm. They said you must list the mm -hmm. email, the mm -hmm. f a functional email, mm -hmm. and a functional contact because they were to contact that referee mm -hmm. to just ask them about you. Is it true? Sakwa was worked here as mm -hmm. blah 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 mm -hmm. blah. Yeah. So oh, what if what if you don't want that kind of transaction? But now here you are on the extreme end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, come up again with that question. I didn't, I didn't quite get it. They, they want you to list a, a valid email and mm -hmm. a contact of your referee and mm -hmm. contact them without even you knowing what they will talk about. Mm -hmm. So how do you protect yourself from such? Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll ask things that <laughs> maybe are supposed to be confidential. They'll yeah. be like, you know, how, how was he behaving? How was she? Mm -hmm. How was her, her, her worker grading, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Like, why is that? Because there's jobs, uh, mm. this was like from, I think it was a USA job. Mm. Yeah, and I'm rating some sort so of international rating. What I usually uh -huh. advise about that eh, uh -huh. is, uh, you know, communication is key. Right. For example, if you ask me to share with you three referees, mm -hmm. uh, one, it is not advisable to just share someone who you've not alerted that I'm, I'm actually indicating you as a referee. Yeah. So at least inform the other person that yeah. uh, there's this job I've applied, mm -hmm. this position, it right. is in this company, mm -hmm. uh, they might contact you asking yeah. you about who I am. Right. You know? And uh, for me, I advocate for honesty. Right. Because uh, you can but, lie but, <laughs> about but people, a referee. <laughs> <laughs> I you know people lie, reach actually. out to referees and they yeah. actually coach them. Like, oh. uh, you know, when they call you, I want you to answer like this and uh, you know, tell them this is who I am. Uh, so know, that I get the job. So I get the job. Eh? Right. But... Uh, I advocate for honesty and, and mm -hmm. uh, I usually say as you also look for a referee, right. uh, you know you're the one in need and you're looking for a job. Uh, yeah. Please look for someone who uh, you know can, can share a good report about you. Because yeah. you know uh, you may be my boss eh? right. and then let's say we, you know human is to error and probably we had a, 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 a bit of a rango. Yeah. So chances are if I write you as a referee <laughs> yeah. and you're, you'll be called without my being Consent. aware yeah so and maybe it's in another company that's competitive <laughs> exactly so the thing is uh, this person yeah. might actually put Throw in the wrong bus. word about you yeah. yeah so that's why i say at least get someone who you're you're in constant communication someone who you know can give a yeah. uh, good report about you right and, and someone they know you a, and someone yeah. who is available and someone who knows you as well yeah i do not advocate for lying eh? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, once you get the job, you, you may lie all your way into the, a particular job. Right. But remember, the employer will also do a background check on you. Yep. Uh, and, and background check may, be, may not even be through uh, your referee. They may even go to your social media handles and yeah. figure out who are you outside employment. 
Right. And so <laughs> that may also affect you somehow. And that's a you good know? and that's a good facet because mm -hmm. we live in a world where the in fact, uh, at some point, uh, we were asked to share how mm -hmm. many followers do you have on mm -hmm. digital in total. Mm -hmm. And that actually gives the employer an upper hand to see, like, what is your personality online, your mm -hmm. digital footprints, what do you post, mm -hmm. you know, True. the things you share on Twitter, mm -hmm. you know, so they're already speaking on your behalf professionally. Even mm -hmm. the kind of photos and the postures, how mm -hmm. do you, you know, it can also determine, I was shocked, somebody yeah, was exactly. fired from a job just the way they mm -hmm. posted. You know, Very but true. it was really petty, bro. That was petty. <laughs> a photo, yeah. seriously. Really? You see a what photo. happens, eh? Uh -huh. uh, w when we talk about professionalism, okay, it's a whole different story, mm -hmm. and we are looking at values and uh, and you know you know values that define who you are, yeah. Right. And so, you know, social media has become so strong nowadays in that a company reputation may actually be affected by you as an individual and what you do out there. I'll give you mm -hmm. an example of a company I worked in and uh, I won't mention which one. Yeah. Uh, one of the staff actually went to a club to drink and uh, he was so drunk and doing all those dramas yeah. wearing a t-shirt that belonged to the company. Where? So you see now that already, when people take the picture, the they, they will not see the guy. <laughs> Yeah. They'll see the t-shirt and they're like, oh, guys from this particular company, this is how yeah, they, they behave. And you may yeah. end up losing clients. All right. And I'll give you another example. When, when you open Facebook, eh? mm -hmm. and uh, this is where I say uh, young people need to be very careful. Even as you use social media, right. be, be very careful things you post there because they might actually affect your, your career in the future. And without knowing, you may think I'm just enjoying today, yeah. but uh, this may come to bite you later. So, for right. example, when you when you log in into Facebook and uh, that section where you're supposed to type Status or to update, update. Uh, there's usually uh, so some blood statement there that says what's in what's your mind. What's on your mind? Yeah. So the moment you 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 post and you type weird things in there, yeah, uh, basically you're telling us this is what is in your mind. Mm. So if you're if you're posting things that are educative, right. and you're telling us mm -hmm. you you've got content in your mind, and right. that's what we are looking as an employer. We need someone who can perform. Right. We need someone who is uh, uh, who is informed, mm -hmm. you know. So sometimes they go that to that extent of even looking at your social media, calling your your referees, calling your former employer, even the HR. Uh, yeah. I've seen some who even contact your former university because you see now people are also forging certificates. certificates eh? yeah. So they go to that extent. So they just go to NEC and the verifying website. Uh, exactly. Why do so they have to? I mean, they, this, call. This, that was just an example. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, there, are, there are quite a number of... Uh, Organizations that do that. Uh, and quite, quite a number of uh, ways they can verify whether your documents right. are, are, legit. are actually legit. Right. Exactly. And, 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 and maybe you can take us to at scale fix. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you walk through some on top point mm -hmm. that are now professionally accepted on the market? For anyone mm -hmm. who's watching and they want to plug in at mm -hmm. scale fix mm -hmm. where you do all this, mm -hmm. how, what is the journey that you take them through until they're ready for a job? Okay. So basically... Uh, our target market is uh, graduates mm -hmm. and um, uh, professional, young professionals who are looking to grow in their career right. uh, or anyone who is looking forward to changing their career. Right. And then when we come to corporate training, it's for all managers and leaders in any organization, any industry, because transformational leadership cuts across the entire, all industries, that is. Yeah. So for someone who is looking for a job, right. Uh, we begin with uh, CV writing. Right. So what we do is uh, we would ask for your current CV mm -hmm. where we have a look at it and see whether it fits the standard that is, right. uh, that is acceptable right. and whether it's uh, well organized, it has all the sections. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, we look at the CV whether it presents you as the professional you are. Mm -hmm. And now once we look at the CV and we realize it needs some work up, then mm -hmm. we would now work on the document. Right. Uh, after working on the document, then we would uh, add you into our WhatsApp group. We have our WhatsApp group currently; it has around uh, around four hundred uh, people. Yeah. And uh, due to the fact that we have people from various uh, industries and various companies, yeah. I, I get to have a lot of job opportunities from you know I, I would say across the nation. Mm -hmm. So, like in a day, I would get across twenty job opportunities that have been posted in various places. Eh? Yeah. So then I would post these jobs into 
that was up group. Okay. And so any person who we do a CV for, then we usually send them a link so that if you're willing, you can join the group. Mm. And uh, if I post any job, and, and these jobs are from uh, junior positions to even the senior most positions. Eh? Mm. And so if you find a job that you feel you're interested, yes. then you would apply. Yeah. And we would guide you into, uh, this is what you need to do. Right. Uh, we need to maybe customize your CV so that it fits the job. Right. Uh, and looking at the skills which they are looking for. Right. And we also do an analysis of yourself to identify whether uh, are you comfortable with these skills. Because I also don't want to do a CV. Yeah. And then it ends up, we lied in the CV that uh, you are good in data analysis. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then you go to the job when uh, yeah. uh, you're given a, a spreadsheet to work on and you have no clue what is yeah. going on. So yeah. we also vet you to understand what are the skills that you have right. uh, and do they match with the JD which is here. Right. And then we customize your CV now. Mm -hmm. So once you apply for the job and we, we do all that and you're called for an interview, then you would come and uh, if you want that is, we take you through an interview coaching session. Right. Uh, most of them we actually do them virtually, but if yeah. someone wants physical, we can always organize and uh, have it done. Yeah. So we take you through an interview coaching session. And the okay. interview coaching session is basically talking of uh, the basics. Mm -hmm. For Which example, mm -hmm. uh, when you go for an interview, I always tell people invest in a suit, S something nice. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't appear for, a, for, for, a, for an interview with a t-shirt and uh, some sports. Eh? So mm. have some professional sweatpants. Look, Mexican. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sweatpants and <So>, Nike. <laughs> so at least have some something right. presentable uh -huh. uh, that uh, uh, you know will will command respect, respect even in the room. They and say actually, you are dressed the way you are dressed. Yes. Uh -huh. So you find uh, when you dress well. Right. It even gives you confidence. Somehow right. confidence just comes because uh, right. you, you're feeling you're you feeling feel good, good about when you, yourself. When you dress well, you feel good exactly. and you're confident. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, we have things like um, at least get there before time. Because, you know, right. I've, I've, I've had situations where uh, the candidate comes so late. Yeah. And you see, the moment you come late, mm -hmm. one, you'll come sweating. Two, yes. you will not feeling good about yourself now because yeah. your mind is like, I have You're to explain now. Yeah. why I came late. And uh -huh. so eventually everything evaporates. Right. We're talking of things like uh, even searching the company. Because right. remember, a background as you, check the, on the company. Exactly. Yeah. So you need mm -hmm. to understand what are some of their values so that even as you speak to them, yeah. they can feel this is one of us. Right. It's only that he or she is not yet in yeah. our company. Right. So Why is it important to do that? Because uh, there's mm -hmm. one of the guests here we spoke to and he, mm -hmm. she said, uh, mm -hmm. she spoke to my uh, co-host, uh, mm -hmm. Mambia, you know, sometimes you're entering in this organization thinking mm -hmm. you're going to make money, but not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not going to make money. Mm -hmm. So it's good to ask them, was it a toxic work environment? Mm -hmm. uh, who are the bosses and how do they relate with the juniors there? Mm -hmm. If it's toxic, ask former employees mm -hmm. who are there. They'll tell you the truth because mm -hmm. they have nothing to lose. So True. if, for example, you want to come to work <laughs> at Y, you do a background check and we'll ask you a story yeah. up or you run yeah. for your life very fast. So I don't think if, I, I don't know, is it cool to do that? Uh, yes, there, there are two, two reasons to do background check. Eh? Uh -huh. One of the reasons, uh, remember an interview is, uh, is not only for the employer to know you. Right. It's also an opportunity for you to know the employer. Oh, so you're both <laughs> making decisions. I mean, right. I can you can interview me, and after right. I listen to what your company is all about and what you stand for, I decide I'm not working for you, even if I'm successful. Right. You see, so it's it's a two way. Mm -hmm. You're here to know about me as a candidate, right. and as a candidate, I'm here to know about, about you. Mm -hmm. So the two reasons why you do a background check. Eh? Yeah. One of them is because you want to understand the company and what they stand for. Yeah. Uh, what are their values, you know? Yeah. You don't want to go to a company where you know they are malicious and all that. Yeah. How do you know they are malicious? <laughs> That's just an example. <laughs> I mean... Uh, Is that the toxic work environment? Because, <laughs> you know, yeah. I've heard so many stories I want, uh, yeah. around toxic work environment. Oh, mm. we all mm. want mm. to Oh, they treat mm. people like this. Yeah. But still, people manage to apply and mm. stay in mm -hmm. the jobs. And there's even somebody who was saying that, you know, your mental health is is worth mm. more than you know a job mm. and i'm like you need the money go for yeah. it survive <laughs> so the, the, the reason sorry before i forget eh? right you see one like i said the employer wants to know who you are 
Right. So by studying the company background and uh, you know from their website, and I'm talking of basically their mission, vision, and all that, right. is so that you can see whether you you'll be able to align yourself with their vision. Yeah. Are you able to contribute to their vision? Because you also right. don't want to join a job which you don't like. So yeah. you're just studying the background so right. that as you interact with the the recruiter. Yeah. you're able to present yourself as somebody who agrees with their mission, their vision, and you actually have the values at heart of that company. Right. But on this other side, mm -hmm. you're also doing a background check so that you know, now this is for you, mm. whether this is a place where I would want to work. Yeah. For example, like you said, if you inquire from former uh, employees, employees mm -hmm. Uh, it has its own pros and cons. And for example, cons is uh, someone may have a bad perception about a company, but yeah. it's because they had an issue with it, not that the company is bad. So right. even as you do this background from uh, other people, mm -hmm. you also need to have a, a space where you make judgment by yourself yeah. on uh, how the company is. I've mm -hmm. seen people even do ghost visits. Ghost, ghost uh, <laughs> like you disguise I, I yourself. Know, it's ghost visits in quotes. I don't know whether that's the, the correct term. Eh? Disguising yourself as exactly. You, know, you go as CID. a client, and yeah. you just want to go and see yeah. how is everything here. The work culture, the culture. Know, how do they uh, respond you know? to people? Exactly. How do they talk to each other? Yeah. You know. You walk in there. You you sacrifice a few coins. Eh? So you yeah. go and uh, maybe pay for a service. Right. See how everything is. Interact with people. Yeah. Uh, now that gives you a real life experience yeah. of. What you're these about to are. get yourself into. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. basically, once we take you now through the interview coaching, yeah. uh, you would then go for the interview. Mm -hmm. And then at that point now, it's up to you because we've already trained you. So it's you now to showcase who you are as a professional to the interviewer. Right. Now, if you're successful, mm -hmm. then from there we come to another section, which is now professional development. Okay. Where now, uh, this is a, a, consult, a consultation kind of a service uh -huh. where we now take you through and tell you now from here you you're in the job. You charge for that? Yes, we charge. Even How for much? the CV writing, we usually charge. Uh, all our consultation is uh, uh, 1,000 shillings. Uh -huh. That is just for like calling and say, Hi, I'm Sanko and I want to get some two, three insights on blah, blah, e blah, exactly, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Uh -huh. Then we take you through everything. That's 1,000 shillings. Uh -huh. For CV writing, it's usually uh, based on years of experience. So for graduates, it's a thousand, and then uh -huh. it goes scaling up. Uh, yeah. But the maximum is uh, usually ten years and above. Right. It's usually a constant figure uh, which of, is? of three thousand. Um, yeah, but then like, in between, like a big figure. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 it's, no, affordable. It's, it's affordable. It's affordable. It's affordable. Right. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we'll take you through professional development, right. where we say now you've gotten the job. Uh -huh. How do you grow from being a junior staff? Right. to a CEO. Mm. For me, in my mm -hmm. 10 years of experience, I grew yeah. from a junior person yeah. to actually managing an entire hospital. And they are stuck in you 10 years. 10 years. Which, uh, uh, it has reminded me of this, this, this book called uh, The Leader Who Had No Title by, he's mm -hmm. I think a New York best-selling author, mm -hmm. Robin Sharma. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've heard of Robin Sharma. Mm -hmm. He's also the author of a book called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And mm -hmm. uh, in that book, he talks mm -hmm. about how to excel in business and mm -hmm. professionally as well. Mm -hmm. He mentions of 10,000 hours that mm -hmm. equals to 10 years, mm -hmm. that is a decade, for you to become a master at exactly. the skill that you do. Mm -hmm. So it's t 10 years <laughs> to do what you've done and now yeah. you're a master at it. Exactly. So it really speaks on itself. Mm. Uh -huh. So we usually say uh, there, are, there are some tactics. Right. And I would want to give my own story. Please do. Please uh, do. Which inspired me even to guide other young people on how to scale from one level to the other. Yeah, please do. Uh, number one mm -hmm. is uh, uh, you need to grow professionally. Mm -hmm. So you find someone has uh, done a degree in marketing, for example. Mm -hmm. And then over a period of 10 years, this person has done has done has not done any other short course, mm. so you find they are only looking for a job with their marketing degree that they did ten years ago. Now that won't make you competitive. Okay. So you need to have uh, maybe give yourself like every year you have a course or two that you do, and we have so many other companies out here which are offering online courses, and they are very cheap, even as cheap as two thousand, mm. so that at least you're growing professionally, and that's one of the right. things that uh, most employers will look at. Yeah. Are you this person who is always advancing uh, education-wise right. um, and, and remaining current with the, with the trends of your particular domain, that is marketing, for example? Right. So that's one of the things. And then uh, uh, the other thing is networking. Right. You know, get to interact with the high people up there. 
For yeah. example, for me, every other time I met someone who is senior to me, uh -huh. be it a CEO, be it a, be it a VP, be it an MD, right. I would always ask, how did you get to where you are? Uh -huh. I would Good talk question. to their offices Good question. and tell them, how did you get to <laughs> where you are uh -huh. at the moment? Right. Uh -huh. And they would tell me, oh, you know, I did uh, business management, mm -hmm. I did this particular short course, right. you know, I did one, two, three, and that kind of guides you into knowing what to, yeah. uh, what to do. Right. And... Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, mo most graduates fail or, or okay. forget to do, just to mention, mm -hmm. is uh, have a vision, even as an employee. There's the company's vision, yeah? Right. But you need to have a vision yourself. Right. Yeah? So you need to ask yourself, right. as, as an employee, right. where do I want to see myself in the next 10 years? Yeah. So come up with a title. Okay. Uh, and so you would say something like, uh, I want to be a general manager. Mm -hmm. in the next 10 years. Yep. Now you've already identified your vision as being a general, general manager. manager. Now what you do is go to the internet right. and Google adverts for general manager. You see adverts, job adverts, yeah. they usually give you the JD, they give you the requirements. Mm -hmm. Now concentrate on uh, the two, the JD and the requirements. Right. So that will guide you to know, for you to be a general manager, manager. Mm -hmm. you need these and these and these courses. Yeah. These are the tasks you'll be involved in on a daily basis. Right. These are the skills you need. Now write all of them down. Right. You can Google like five or 10 mm -hmm. JDs. Right. So write them down. These are the skills you need. Yeah. This is the training you need. Right. These are the tasks you'll be engaging in as a GM. Right. Now in those 10 years that you've uh, uh, targeted yourself, uh, th th uh, in this uh, period that you've targeted yourself, mm -hmm. make sure now you achieve all those things that you indicated. So if it all is right. school, go back to school and do that skill. So it's, it's possible you can have a, a degree, like, uh, like, like in broadcast, I have a degree mm -hmm. and some others as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's possible, it's, it's okay for me to upgrade and maybe do another, you know, maybe a, a different course that may be still relevant to what I've studied so mm -hmm. that I just stay afloat to the, for exactly. the future market. Exactly. All right, hold it right there mm -hmm. as I get the feedback on social media. We had asked you a good question, especially when it comes to do business. No, <laughs> nothing is for free. So there's somebody who says, uh, that is Dennis Kiala. I said, I'm going to give you a little bit of money. I'm going to give you Gaidi kiwa na 40k kwa mpesa. Mbona wanaume wanaitwa gaidi? You guys, you've started with violence. <laughs> and then there's uh, Anto Max Muria anasema Ethiopia watching. Ha, Iman James, thanks for that. Anasema kuna boy ako huku town yetu. Anakusalimia unamfuata hadi kwa launching, unalipwa launching. Then mna, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, I see what you're doing. But thanks for that. Uh-huh. Mm, okay. Uh, Esther Thanthi, Rasta Gala Nasema, good morning. Good morning to you. And I think uh, that is Kuria Omukura Nasema, Kohatia Muranga, well represented. Shout out to you. And then last one is JJ Ozengo. And I say, Mombasani, Oto Mombasani, hello, hello. Mahamri Yapo, Mahayapo. And I say, Mombasani, well present. Karibu sana, continue watching. As we mm -hmm. finalize, we've got like uh, two minutes to go. Mm -hmm. For anyone who has been watching this conversation mm -hmm. and um, they want to be a part of Scaleflix, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, is, is there a website, is there a link? Mm -hmm. And maybe are there like maybe future packages that you guys will be offering and expanding your organization? Mm -hmm. Also, I, I don't know, did you, tell, uh, did you say where the offices are located? I mean, it's all online since it's a world of mm -hmm. digital. Uh, okay, so currently we are operating digitally. Okay. Um, we used to have an office, but then due to some COVID issues, we uh, decided to go online first. Right. But then uh, very soon we'll be having an office mm -hmm. where people can actually visit. Right. We have a very strong online presence. Uh, if mm -hmm. you go to all our social media platforms, that is uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, right. uh, Facebook, uh, our handle is the same, Skillfix International. Right. Um, our number is very simple to grasp. It's 0700-231-231. We actually have a website that is uh, www.skillfix.co.ke but mm -hmm. at the moment is under, under some restructuring because we want to uh, make it um, kind of, um, you know, there's some things we need to upgrade. Mm -hmm. And so currently the website is not there. But uh, very soon we'll be able to be going live with the updated site. Right. Yes. And I see you also have an email support at skillfix.ca. Yeah, exactly. Right. So right. if you're not able to reach us via mobile, yeah. uh, for example, let's say you want to do an email, then we have an email that is support yeah. at skillfix.co.ke. Right. Yes. And there's a place where you, you, you say your future mm. begins here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's true.
Right. Yeah. Sour, sour. We have been speaking. I don't know. Uh, also, uh, just one last mm -hmm. question. Is it possible for someone to lie on mm -hmm. their CV? Mm -hmm. And then uh, they've lied on the CV, yes. Mm -hmm. But even when they, are, when they come for the interview, mm -hmm. the, the confidence is A1. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I'm a CV, kila kitu de Adima referees, etc. And also the confidence will get them the job. As mm -hmm. compared to somebody who has that master's, but hana confidence ya kuongea ko your room. Mm -hmm. Because also meeting new faces on a panel is really discouraging. Mm -hmm. And you, for example, I mentioned you're meeting your ex who is a mm -hmm. boss there. You're like, hey, <laughs> how do I even say good morning <laughs> to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you say good morning, lady and gentleman. Mm -hmm. I'm a good morning ladies, mm -hmm. you know, okay. such cues really help you. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's possible to, 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 to lie. Uh -huh. It's possible to lie. Uh -huh. And this is where we say each organization should have a very strong human resource department right. so that they are able to capture some of these lies, especially when they are doing their background check. Eh? Right. Uh, but you're, you're right. Someone may, may, may lie. I've seen that happen. Uh -huh. Uh, and then they would even go to the interview and they have uh, ro rooftop co confidence mm -hmm. and they even get the <laughs> rooftop job. Rooftop confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, their confidence is uh, the rooftop. Yeah. Uh, and they even get the job. Right. And then you find these people are also very good at learning what's happening on the ground. Eh? Right. And they end up even joining the workforce and even performing better than everyone else who is there. Mm -hmm. But what happens is uh, uh, that will always catch up with you at some point. Yeah. But the problem and the problem is the moment it catches up on you, let's say you lied, you have a master's degree, you lied of a company you worked in, you lied of the duties you did, and then you get the job and you're even so good at your job. In fact, those people are so good at their job, eh? you can't even tell. Yeah. At one point, if it catches up with you, then it affects your entire career. Yeah. Your you reputation see, is Yes, because the moment you go to another job and let's say the other employer asked for a reference letter from your former employer, yeah. Uh, definitely they won't write a good report. They'll be like, this person lied to join right. the workforce. Right. Yeah. And then about greeting, I usually say, uh, you know, it's not rocket science. Mm. When you walk somewhere, just say, good morning, everyone. Yeah. And that's it. Not, yeah, not because you see, they are, they, they are lady ladies and gentlemen. And gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make, make it brief. Good morning, everyone. And, mm. uh, you, and that's you it. to sit down. And that's it. Yeah. So, so we have to go because we are out of time. Thank you so much. Uh, that is MD Ombugu, founder and CEO of Scalefix International. If you have been watching and you are jobless, <laughs> like I said, being without a job is another job because you have a job of looking for a job. So you have like three jobs before you get a job. And in Kenya, it's T for tough. Hopefully you've learned something. And uh, thank you so much, sir, for coming through and sharing your insights as well. You're welcome. All right, that's what we call it a day. Thank you so much at Y254 Channel at Brian Sako 101. We see you next time right here on Y in the Morning.